ago, you want to create lobster bisque, but you don't have a lobster pet and you don't know what bisque is. That's okay. Just go to the grocery store, go to that lobster section where they have the little lobsters free range in the tank, grab one and just walk out. It'll work out for you, I promise. Hey guys, I'm back to Spy Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a, take a look at how to make this cool, like, motion graphic kind of um, text sliding banner looking thing. It looks cool. I just recently did this for something that I was working on personally, and I decided it might be a good idea to go ahead and try to recreate it for you guys right here on camera <coughs> for a tutorial. So, let's get started. I hope you guys' day is fantastic, by the way. Happy uh, Monday, wherever you are. Um, so, hit uh, delete. Just dra drag a box over top of everything. We're going to hit delete um, on our keyboard. Hit 1. So, go into the front-facing view here. Hit shift A and search for a camera down here. Camera. And then click the middle mouse button. So, click in your scroll wheel to pan around the scene like that. Hit G on your keyboard and then hit Y to move the camera backwards in the, on the Y axis. Yeah, left click to confirm that then hit zero to go into the camera's view now with this done let's go ahead and hit shift a and we'll search for a mesh plane and hit rx90 on our numpad so that's r on your keyboard then x on your keyboard and then nine and zero on your numpad hit left click to confirm this text uh, to confirm this this square movement this plane movement now um, it's super easy to go ahead and get the shape that we want by just changing the shape of the camera. So let's go ahead and change the Y value all the way down like this right there. There you go. So we'll make it something like uh, we can we can go thinner like uh, we can go thinner and make it like thicker like that. But I think I want to leave it the way that it was. So let's go ahead and, and keep it on this like thinner type of style. So uh, the resolution will be nine uh, 1920 by 400. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, the mesh plane, hit uh, S on your keyboard to scale, and then hit X to only scale it on the X axis like that. So it covers up all of the camera. Now, we don't want it to be too much, so you just put it on right, right past the edges, so you can't see like that little gray space there. So right past the edges, and then for the top and bottom, hit S, Z to scale on the Z axis, and we'll just make it like down like that. There we go. Nice. So with that done. We need to, first of all, we need to animate this before we get carried away. So open up your timeline down here at the bottom. Go to start frame, change it to zero. There you go. Um, right there, change it to start frame to zero and make sure you're on the zero frame. Uh, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to see that. Um, change the frame rate to 60 so it looks nice and smooth here in this uh, tab right here, the main tab, which is the output properties tab. There we go. Um, and then we can go ahead and start animating this. So on uh, frame, let's say frame uh, 120, we'll hit I, location. Then on frame about maybe frame 20, we'll hit G, Z to move this up to about that location, right? And then hit I, location. And then on frame 0, we'll go all the way back. Hit this little button and go all the way back to the front. Then we'll hit G, uh, Z and move it all the way out of the camera's view. Hit I, location. There we go. Nice. So we, if, we do, if we play this now, you can see it looks like this which is exactly what we want. Now, this 120 keyframe is kind of far away, so hit G with this one selected. Select this one by just clicking a, clicking a box over, over top of it like that. Hit G to move back to maybe frame 80, something like that. Hit uh, play, and you can see what it looks like. There we go. That's much better to me. All right, we look good. We look good. We look good. I'm going to select our camera, go to the camera tab, and change the um, viewport display passer part two um, all the way up to uh, one so we can only see what, what the camera sees. Um, now, with the um, with this plane, I want to have it maybe loop. So, easy way to do that is just to go ahead and duplicate all of the keyframes we've already created. So just click and drag a box over top of all three of these. Put your cursor on frame 80. Hit Shift D to duplicate all of these. And then right click to cancel that movement. Then hit S and then move your, your, your keyframe. Actually, wait, we need to hit Shift D and move them over here. Sorry, I do apologize. Hit Shift D and then move them over here because if we just put them back, back where they were, it's just going to cancel the, um, the duplication. So... Hit Shift D, move them over here, and then go to this frame, which is on 170. Hit uh, S, and then hit negative 1 on your numpad. So the negative, the, the minus signs are negative, and then 1 on your numpad. And then hit G to move these over. So you can see this last frame here. I'm going to put this last frame on frame 250. So that it, on the last frame, it is, that's the end. So if we, if we hit play now, you can see it does like this. So it comes down, swoosh, wee, 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 and then it goes right back up. That's just really cool. So then it comes back down again. Really, really cool stuff. So that's uh, super basic, but we've got that down now, finally. Um, so uh, what we need to do now is do the text. So hit Shift-A, and we'll search for a text object. Boom. 
put that bad boy right there. Look at that thing. Mm, gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Should be a Vogue runway model. Hit R and on your keyboard and then X. Once again, 9-0 on your numpad to rotate it. X on the X axis by 90 degrees. Hit enter to confirm that. Now, just because you can see the text is glitching here, that means it's on the same exact plane. It's on the same, uh, it's in the same exact place that the that the plane is on. So we don't really want that. Um, so what we need to do to fix that is very, very, very simple. Hit three. Let's go to the side view. So we can see the side of the plane and the side of the text. Hold, uh, hit G, and then hold down shift. And then very slightly move the text. As you see, if you zoom all the way in, zoom as far in as you can get, as far as it goes. That's, this is as far in as it goes, right there. That's the stopping point, right there. Hit G and then hold on shift and move it slightly up about that much. So now when we pan back out, you should be able to see that it's not. Oh, it's, it's still glitching because we we didn't move far enough. But I, let's move it a little bit further. And as you can see, we'll move, we'll move it about G, Y, and then there we go. So hit G and then hit Y and then move it forward. So that's probably a good amount. There we go. It's still going to maybe glitch. So let's go ahead and hit three one more time. And if we move it to the closest, yeah, so hit G. And then Y, and then hold on Shift, and then move it to the first line after the blue line. So that's probably far enough away. There we go. So what, what, I, what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to get the text as far uh, as far as away from it as possible without making it so that it's so far away. When you turn to the side, you can see there's a gap. We don't want to see this, that there's a gap, so we just want it to be off of the the plane. That's essentially what I was doing there. So um, hit zero to go into the camera's view. With the text selected, go to the text tab here. Change the horizontal alignment from left to center. And then go ahead and turn the Y offset down a little bit to maybe 0.3. But when we change the font, you might need to change that again. So keep that in mind. Go to the font section right here. Open that up. Hit this little folder. This should open up all your fonts. Um, there you go. And you should be able to find any font that you want to use for today's tutorial. Just to get things crack a lack. And I think I'm just going to use Impact. because It's just a nice basic font to go with. It's super easy. And it's right there. So um, hit maybe 2.3. 0.2, yeah, 0.25 is probably good. There we go. So I'm hit tab to go into this text to change the text. I'm gonna make it say text. I'm gonna make it say tutorial. Nice, cool. So hit tab and then just do that and hit tab to go back out of it. So tab to go in and out of edit mode. We can go to the material tab here and do some of the materials now, which is good. So let's go to the render uh, so to the material viewport shading. Sorry, let's go to material viewport shading at the, up at the top right. You can see. There's the four little buttons, the wireframe, which is going to show you the wireframe of everything, the solid, which we've been using, material, which is going to show the materials, which it's going to look exactly the same because we don't have any materials yet, and then rendered, which is going to be what it looks like when it's rendered. So let's go ahead, and we might as well do, we might as well do this on rendered viewport shading. So let's grab the um, plane, this little drop down right here on the material tab, select material, and then go ahead and change the surface from principal BSDF to emission. And now we need to go ahead and make this the color that we want, which I want this to be white. So we'll leave it as white. Um, now, as you can see, this is not really white. It's like gray. So the way to fix this is to go to the first main tab here, the render properties tab, and then go to color management and change this from filmic to standard. It is so annoying that that is on filmic by default. I hate that. I absolutely hate it. So you can see the difference. That's not white. This is obviously white. So that's the way you fix that. If you're trying to get an actual white color, um, hit the tutorial text. Um, go to the material uh, tab, hit new, and we'll change this. We'll call this text. Nice, in all capitals. So I guess it's text, not text. Um, but let's go ahead and change the base color. Uh, the prints will be SDF. Change this to emission first. There we go, emission. And then change the base color to like a different color. We'll do like an orange, just blood orange, which kind of looks really cool in this situation. So we'll do something like that. Um, we don't need to change the strength because if you change the strength, it won't be the same color. This is this actual orange color. But if we make it like four it's like not that color obviously it's gonna be brighter so don't worry about that um nice so with that done um we need to go ahead and edit the sorry animate the text my, my mistake edit uh, animate the text now so let's go ahead and do something like this i kind of want it to maybe come in from the side let's go coming from the side right here so i'm on frame like 20 well we'll, we'll put in some um, marker keyframes so essentially these keyframes are not going to be animating anything but they're going to be a marker so we know where to go back to um, to actually move the text around. So hit I on frame 20, location, then on frame like maybe, uh, maybe frame 40, we'll do something like that. Hit I, location, and on frame 90, I, location. Now, you can see that it moved at all because we didn't move anything, but this, these are just markers, so we know that I want to animate them on frame 20, 40, and 90. So let's go back and actually animate things now. So go to frame 20, move it all the way to the side like this, I, location. I kind of want this to be on the right-hand side, actually, like this. Yeah, do that. Let's do that instead. Um, I location, move the frame 40, 
And then instead of having it be exactly there, I'm going to move it over slightly. So hit GX, move it over about right there. I location. Now when we play this, you can see it does like this, which is really cool. Now that's too quick after the, 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 the white comes down. So we'll change it to frame 50. Click and drag a box over top of everything. Hit G to move it like that. And then just left click to confirm that movement. There we go. I think that just comes in too quickly, I think. Actually, we'll move everything back. So maybe by 20 frames. That's going to be too slow now. Oh, no, it's fine. It's good. Sweet. Cool. So I'm going to turn off uh, viewport denoising as well. So it's a little easier to see. There we go. Nice. So that looks really cool. Wait. And then on frame on frame 140, we'll duplicate one frame 140 to 190. And then we'll have it on frame tw uh, 220 G G X to about Uh, well, to about right there, maybe, actually. So, I, location, and then on frame 140, it'll be all the way off. I, location. Nice. Okay, that's a little slow, actually, but it's, uh, it's all right. That's cool. That's fine. We'll do like this, and then like like the. Okay, just moving things around, you know? There we go. That's good. I like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the text comes in and comes out. So this way we have comes in from the left, so it's from the right, from the right, sorry, and then goes out of the left. There we go. And, and the white comes down, which is really, really cool stuff. So I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoy it. That is all that I wanted to do today. Very, very simple, uh, like scrolling kind of motion graphic animated kind of thing, which is really cool. You can, just, you can use this for so many different things. But, um, but yeah, so I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.